Assalamu alaikum everyone. Do you have a relative who loves taunting? Or someone in school who likes bullying? Or someone who's looking for any opportunity to put you down? Or someone at work who's very judgmental and you don't want their behavior to upset you? You don't want them to affect your confidence? Simply you just don't want to have a bad day because of someone else? Then you need to master the skill of emotional intelligence. Our beloved Rasulullah faced a lot of verbal abuse in Makkah and he managed to protect himself from their tongue through his emotional intelligence. So today we are going to learn about emotional intelligence through Rasulullah how did he implement it in his life. See, in life, we're always going to meet certain people at school, college, work, relatives, somewhere who don't have good manners, who are going to hurt you. And you don't want to be living a life of a victim all the time because that's going to make you a weak person. If you want to be a strong person, you need to learn how to manage your emotions and how to manage others' emotions. For a long time in our history, everyone thought a person's success and failure depended on their intelligence, their IQ. But it was in the 1980s, a researcher from Harvard University, he refuted this claim. And he said, no, emotional intelligence also plays a crucial role. It was later on in the 1990s, the research of Dan Goldman became popular. He concluded in his research that a person's success or failure depends 20% on their IQ and 80% on their emotional intelligence. So just because you get all A grades in your school, college or university doesn't mean that this is a guarantee you are going to be successful in life. That's only 20% of your success. 80% is going to depend on your emotional and spiritual intelligence. But the biggest hindrance in your success is there's a delusion that 95% people think they have emotional intelligence. The research by Tasha Jurek, she found out that there were only 10 to 15 percent people who actually had self-awareness but 95 percent thought they were self-aware so we need to learn about this skill we don't want to be in this illusion that yes i understand my emotions and i know everything about emotional intelligence because maybe we don't so let's quickly understand what are some of the benefits of emotional intelligence. First of all, it's going to improve your relationships. Not everyone's out there because they hate you and they just want to get you, but there's a lot going on in their mind. So if you can understand their emotions, you can make excuses for them and you can forgive them. A lot of time, the problem between a parent and a child, it's because of lack of emotional intelligence. And when they don't understand this, the parent thinks the child is disobedient and the child thinks the parent is too controlling. So we are definitely going to improve our relationships if we can understand this skill. Secondly, if we can understand our emotions, we can have control over them. We have more self-awareness. That means we become a strong and confident person. And conversely, if we don't understand our emotions, this can lead to depression, drugs and drinking, eating disorders. And a lot of young people, when they don't know how to manage their emotions, they become very aggressive and they just leash out on everyone else. So it's very important to understand our emotions. And fourthly, when we can make the effort to understand others' emotions, we are actually acquiring a lot of other new skills as well. The skill of empathy, mercy, compassion, patience and forgiveness. But one disadvantage I do want you to keep in mind. Not everyone who's emotionally intelligent is a sincere person. Sincerity is a different quality altogether. You'll find a lot of emotionally intelligent people can also be manipulative as well. They will manipulate you for their own personal gain. So you do need to be careful as well, okay? Let's first talk about self-awareness. Understanding our emotions managing our emotions and motivating ourselves. There's nothing wrong in emotions. There's nothing wrong in being sad or being angry. Emotional intelligence is not about getting rid of any emotion. Emotional intelligence is about learning to balance them, learning to manage them. So what I want you to do for one whole day, I want you to observe your emotions. So in one day, we meet our parents, we meet our teachers, we meet our friends, we meet someone at work, we meet relatives. All the people you are meeting in that one day, start observing your behaviour. So start thinking about your emotions. What was your emotion when you met your friends? Were you happy? What was your emotion when you met your teachers? Were you grumpy? What was your emotion when you met your parents? Were you moody? What was your emotion when you met your relatives? You know, oh, I like them. They're my friends. Oh, no, okay, I don't want to meet them. Whatever your emotions were, write down your emotions throughout the day. How did they change depending on who you met? And once you have identified all those different emotions, which are linked to different people, start thinking, why? Why did my emotion change every time? And don't play the victim card. 
don't blame everything on the next person victim mentality is not going to get you nowhere in life you won't be a strong and a confident person that's not the purpose of emotional intelligence oh i'm ignoring this person because you know they just always mean to me don't be victims no to understand the emotions the purpose is to either improve your relationships or somehow protect yourself so for example if you are someone who gets angry very quickly and every time you're angry you react then you want to understand what are the triggers let's give you an example let's say there's two friends and one friend she says something mean about another girl and you just heard this friend saying mean things about another girl and when you meet this other girl you just react and when you react you kind of obviously don't have a good relationship with this other girl because you reacted for no reason and that girl did nothing to you but you just reacted for no reason then you need to think why did I react and this person said nothing to me and if you start thinking you'll realize you reacted because your friend was saying some mean things about this next girl and guess what your friend was perfectly nice and normal with her and they have a good relationship and you just distorted your relationship with her because you reacted so now you need to understand, maybe there's an instigator. Maybe when your friend says something, she is acting like an instigator. She doesn't mean to, but that's what happens to you. So identify the instigators, identify the triggers. And once you have identified them, then tell your mind, this is a trigger. Next time when this thing happens, don't react, stay calm. Don't underestimate the power of mind. You can really train your mind. But to train your mind, you first of all need to know yourself. Why did you react this way? What happened? What are the triggers? What are the instigators? Look out for these things. So you really need to understand your emotions, first of all, to even get to this stage. So remember, to be self-aware means to understand your emotions, the reasons behind them and the actions which are a result of them. So now I'm going to give you some tips to understand your emotions. The first tip is solitude. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, even before he became a prophet, he used to go to Cave Hira and spend months there all in his own. So we need to spend some time on our own. And when I say solitude, I mean just you alone without your phone. You know, you know, with our phones, we can travel the world these days. And that is not solitude at all. So make sure you've actually turned your phone off and you are just alone. Secondly, meditation. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, even after becoming a prophet, he loved his solitude and meditation. And now he's doing it through his Qiyam al-Layl. He's spending the night in the Ibadah, just him and Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. He's worshipping him, he's meditating, he's pondering upon his mission himself. Thirdly, pay attention to your emotions. So Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when his little son passed away, he was very upset and he cried. And the Sahaba said, Rasulullah, are you crying as well? And he acknowledged his emotions. He said, yes, I'm sad. And then straight away he said, I am pleased with the will of Allah. So he's understanding his emotions and immediately he's also controlling his emotions. Fourth tip is just write what you're feeling, what you are thinking. Put your thoughts on a piece of paper and just take everything out from here. And when you're writing on that piece of paper, write down the reasons you are feeling that way. And when you're writing those reasons, you realise a lot of your reasons are just based on assumptions. Assumptions are not facts. They're just a lot of ideas that you create in your mind about next person's intention, what their motive is. And you'll find that the reality is a lot of these people that's not their intention. You know, people are very busy with their lives. They don't really have time to, to hate you and, you know, plan against you. Everyone is so busy with their lives. So maybe it's just you creating a lot of these things in your mind. So make sure you understand the difference between assumptions and facts. And then once you've written that piece of paper, you don't want to keep it. Throw it away. So once you have understood your emotions, next I'm going to give you some tips how you can manage those emotions. So first of all, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he told us in the hadith that hastiness is from shaitan and calmness is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So whenever you are emotional, don't be hasty in making a decision. Always wait until you are calm. Secondly, learn to express your emotions and thoughts. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know, one day he was with his wife Aisha radiallahu anha and, you know, he said to Aisha, in, you know, as a, in a nice sense of humor, Aisha, I know when you're happy with me and I know when you're upset with me. When you're happy with me, you say the Lord of Muhammad and when you're upset with me, you say the Lord of Ibrahim. And, um, 
this is not exactly about his emotion, but it's more about his thoughts. So he's letting Aisha know that I understand how you are feeling towards me. Thirdly, learn to identify the triggers. Once you have identified the triggers, keep on reminding yourself, these are the triggers. And whenever I see this trigger, I'm not going to react. Fourth, it's very important that you recognize that a lot of things these people say, it's not who you are, it's who they are. It's their reflection of their inner self. It's their insecurities that they project on you. So you need to understand, you know, whatever this person is saying, it's what's going on in their mind. And that's not who you are. You know who you are. So the fifth tip I'm actually going to say is recognize who you are, what your values are, what you stand for, and don't let anyone else affect your emotions affect your behavior put this little shield between you and them and finally once you have understood your emotions you've learned to manage them you need to motivate yourself and get up and continue with your everyday life and for that you need to have a high purpose in life as well have high purpose have meaningful purpose in your life and motivate yourself and go and achieve your goals so once you have mastered self-awareness, you've understood your emotions, how to manage and motivate them, then only after that, you'll actually be able to understand other people's emotions and manage them. And until you don't understand your own emotions, you won't be able to understand other's emotions and you won't be able to improve your relationships and work towards success. And in order to understand other people's emotions, we need to have the skill of empathy and affection. Now, there's a difference between sympathy and empathy. Sympathy is where you feel sorry for someone and empathy is where you actually put yourself in their place and you try your best to understand what they're actually going through and to put yourself in their shoes you actually need to have good listening skills and to have good listening skill means you're not always talking about yourself you're actually listening to others but make sure you do have that right balance because having good listening skills doesn't mean you just become a counselor and you're always listening to other people's problems because that's so unhealthy for your mind as well so find the right balance inshallah so one day, uh, Hussein, the son of Ali, anhuma, he asked his father about how were the Rasulullah's gatherings. And Ali said that in Rasulullah's gatherings, every single Sahaba was given just the right amount of attention by Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. To the point that every Sahabi would think, you know, there's something noble about him. There's something important about him. You know, they felt valued. And Rasulullah was only able to achieve this level of emotional intelligence because he had the skills of mercy and patience and forgiveness. So when we're trying to understand other people alongside, we are developing the skills of empathy, mercy, compassion, patience and forgiveness. And these are the skills which every believer must have. So that just tells us how important emotional intelligence is. It's not just about improving our relationships, but it's about improving our character, becoming better Muslims. So once we start understanding other people's emotions, how do we actually manage them? So if someone's sad, you're going to console them, maybe give them advice if they need. If someone's a bit moody or if they've made some sort of mistake, then you make excuses for them. Also, Rasulullah told us, like, in olden times, they used to have slaves. And he's like, for your slaves, make 70 excuses for them in a day. So basically, whoever is working under you, he's saying, make excuses for these people. Because when we start making excuses for them, it's easier for us to forgive them. And if we're not making excuses, then we start having a grudge. We're like, they're intentionally doing this. They're doing this on purpose. And it gets difficult to forgive. And if we want to be forgiven ourselves, we need to learn to forgive others. So when you're making an excuse for someone else, you're not just doing them a favor, but you're becoming a better person yourself. You're improving your character. Uh, so yeah, it's very important to learn to make excuses for other people. And if someone's happy and you know they've invited you to an event, don't spoil the moment. Don't say, oh, the food's not nice. Oh, I don't like the decor. I don't really like what you're wearing. No, be there for them. All of this is going to improve your relationship with other people. And also I want you to know you can't become emotionally intelligent overnight. You have to keep on learning about emotional intelligence. You have to kind of keep on thinking about it on a daily basis. And it's, it's work in progress. It's, it takes a long time, but it's something we all need to work on. Once you have mastered your emotional intelligence, then the next stage is your spiritual intelligence. I don't have that much time to talk about that today, but maybe another time, inshallah. I hope this was beneficial. Take care. Assalamu alaikum.